their contribution is profound and uh, and uh, influenced the growth of their fields. Uh, in fact, they established a whole field of inquiry that is beginning to be recognized as uh, containing the keys to eventual cancer cure. It's a huge contribution. I was going to be an aviator, I was going to be a policeman, I was, I had all the usual kinds of aspirations that children have and then sometime in, in uh, the mid-teens I decided on medicine. Why? For a very foolish reason. It struck me that the, the great advantage of being a doctor was your, you were your own boss. And I liked that idea. When Gerhard Herzberg, who subsequently won a Nobel Prize, went to the University of Saskatchewan as his first place of uh, settling in Canada, and he actually taught my brother and told him he had talent. So uh, that made me know there was decent physics going on at the University of Saskatchewan. And uh, so I thought I'd see what I could do. I'd try that something I thought was pretty hard and see if I could do it. And if I could do that, maybe I would continue with this kind of higher education. But the second reason was uh, my, my parents insisted that we both go to university. And I had a choice between the University of Alberta and the University of Saskatchewan. And as I recall it, the University of Saskatchewan offered me a $50 entrance scholarship, and the University of Alberta offered me nothing. So $50 seemed like an awful lot to me at that time. So uh, that was another reason. You would not imagine in a normal situation that these two people would get together. I met Dr. Till briefly when he was at the Connaught Labs, but I got to know him much more when we moved into the Ontario in Cancer Institute on Sherburne Street, and uh, I was going to use radiation to prepare mice to be recipients for bone marrow transplantation. Um, Dr. Johns had a rule that said that only physicists could use radiation. Dr. Till volunteered to be the physicist, and we never looked back. We developed a genuine collaboration where we, we talked on equal terms about what kinds of experiments we thought we'd like to do and what, which ones should be done instead of, you know, me helping him or, or you know, some sort of uh, uh, temporary arrangement. We didn't think of it as temporary. And of course, we got along very well, which uh, I found him, uh, and I still do, an original mind. Well, I think we had different approaches, but they were complementary, and we didn't. We knew, we knew that when we disagreed, that the right answer was something different. Physicists have a way of thinking that is quantitative, not qualitative. It is based on assays, not descriptions. The assay is uh, quite a simple one. You prepare animals as recipients with a large dose of radiation, and then you inject normal marrow cells into them. And if you inject in a, a small number of marrow cells, much smaller than is usual, and examine the spleens of the animals after 10 to 14 days, it's obvious that the spleens have lumps. And it, the, the important thing that we did was to count the lumps and determine that there was a linear relationship, a straight line relationship between the number of cells that were injected and the number of lumps. We found out subsequently, we didn't know at the time, that there were, had been reports previously, but they were, what they said was these bumps were local areas of regeneration, which is a sort of pathologist's uh, view of it. He, he had a different view. 
and so did I actually when he came with some excitement and showed me uh, what he'd seen uh, I agreed and we both came from experience with microbiology and we thought of them as colonies of cells rather than local areas of regeneration. More importantly they could also look at these colonies histologically through the way people had always looked at blood cells and say there are red blood cells in the colony, there are white blood cells in the colony, there are neutrophils, there are lymphocytes. Therefore, the one stem cell that lodged into the spleen in this site must have created all of those different cell types, which means that it's not one stem cell for neutrophils, one stem cell for red cells, it's one stem cell that can make all cell types. They were totally involved uh, as two individuals in one program, um, two co-equal individuals. I think the most uh, important thing that uh, made uh, Bun look successful was that he uh, he did he had unbounded imagination, unbounded imagination, and and he uh, and uh, and uh, Jim Till were a very good co combination because he and he had many of the ideas, or a large part of the ideas, and Jim was very much a person who understand, understood science and um, was able to formulate the ideas and help to formulate the ideas. He is uh, uh, a remarkable intellect uh, with a man of boundless enthusiasm and a crystal clear mind, and it, it was bound to happen, whatever he would touch he would touch with originality and incisiveness. If I'd just done an experiment and, and it, it had a tremendous result and I was excited about it, and, and as soon as I had talked to Jim Till about it and got his agreement as to how I, you know, his, his, um, the benefit of his understanding as to what this all means, it, it was fun to go to McCullough because he would start with that result and project 10 years into the future. Well, if that's true, then this is what ha should happen. And, and, you know, way down the road, we should be able to do this and this and this. And, and he would, just thinking on his feet, design experiments that maybe nobody would do for five years, but he would think of them on the spot. I'm a scientist, uh, not a physician. I have a PhD, not an MD. And so, uh, I never even entered my mind that, uh, that, that I might enter a medical hall of fame. Uh, but I'm delighted that my colleague Ernest McCullough uh, is entering. He is a medical person and it is a highly appropriate recognition for him. And so it's, it's also a delight uh, to be with him. I mean, to, be, uh, to come into the, the hall of fame at the same time uh, because our names have been linked together uh, so much. And, for so long. Uh, it's nice to be together in this particular uh, time. The Hall of Fame recognizes people who've made uh, significant contributions to the health research system in the country. I can't think of many people who have done made a more significant contribution uh, because, as I said before, uh, transformative work. People, a lot of people do very good science. People who do science that changes their field are rare and they deserve in the Hall of Fame because they made that type of uh, uh, discovery.